Hey guys, Ray from Lovey RV and Boat. So I'm back with another review of a lithium battery. I've done a number of them over the years, but I've usually concentrated on the more kind of higher end, higher price batteries like Line Energy and this SFK, um, SOK, and what's in my, my trailer now is a Xantrex batteries. But I've had some people say maybe I should uh, review some of the, the cheaper end batteries that are a lot lower priced that people can afford. So I've kind of been looking around at them. I did do a review of the Ampere Time battery, which they've since changed their name to Lee Time. And actually that one did have a, a problem with it. Um, it had a problem where it would shut down and stuff. So I wasn't super impressed with that one. But over the years I've been looking, people are always offering me constantly these uh, these uh, batteries for um, review. And this winter, this company called Watt Cycle had this uh, 12 volt, 300 amp hour mini, which seemed like a perfect thing for, for a lot of RVers. And it was basically about half the cost of say the, the SFK here or the SOK and um, probably a third of the cost of a Xantrex or a, a Line Energy or Battleborn. So I thought uh, I'd take them up on the offer and do a review. Their little 100 amp hour battery um, had good reviews online, so I figured, oh, this might be a, a good one to review. Um, I just received it a couple days ago, and I was kind of looking online, and I came across a video by a, a, a YouTuber that does a lot of solar and battery reviews um, off grid and, uh, and uh, grid tie stuff. And he had, he had done a test on this and when he took it apart, he found out the cells actually in there only added up to 280 amp hours. And uh, so he called them out on it and they've since uh, put on um, some notifications on their Facebook and their website about that. Okay, so here's what they posted a few days ago. We appreciate your continued trust and support. We're writing to address a labeling, labeling issue concerning our 300 amp hour mini battery. This battery utilizes EVE LF280K cells, which are pretty good uh, lithium cells. Um, they test capacity of 310 amp hours and they're trying to say that's why they labeled them that way. Um, but uh, it says, however, Mr. Will correctly pointed out the labeling should reflect this rated cell capacity. So what they're going to do is they're renaming the battery and it's a token of appreciation. And will people will get uh, $50 off with this code. All customers who purchased will receive $50 refund and automatic two year warranty extension. And they'll be introducing a new battery model with the 300 amp hour capacity rating. So that's what they've done. And they've posted that on the front of their website and their Facebook page. And they also emailed me about it. Also, when I watched his video, I noticed that he did a, uh, a max current output test to see if it would shut down. And he got up to something like 850 amps or something way up there and it still wouldn't shut down after a couple minutes, which is uh, not a good thing. Even if the cells can handle it, all these little connectors and the inside um, wiring and the wiring in, in your RV from the battery, usually they're never gonna handle a sustained current that high. Something like this, if it's say rated for 200 um, amps output, it should least cut down shut off maybe at 250 amps but not that high they're still claiming the shutdown is 600 amps which is still pretty high what it should do and what a lot of batteries do like this one line energy for example is they'll allow a surge for maybe up to three five seconds like that so if if it's being used and, and you turn on your inverter and there's a surge like starting an air conditioner or something it will handle that, but if it's a sustained output, it should cut off. Now, people will, good practice is to always put a fuse on every battery to protect the wiring and don't count on the internals of these to 
actually be your shutdown. Um, some of the very uh, high-end batteries, like my Xantrex, when I opened it up and looked inside, they actually had a 250 amp um, fuse, proper fuse in there, really nice fuse. So they actually internal in their battery put in a fuse in case, you know, the customer doesn't fuse it properly on the outside, which is a nice touch. You just get a lot more. That's the reason you pay more. So there's always a trade-off to these cheaper batteries. Um, for example, in this one, this is the same footprint. That's why I brought it out to compare because this is a mini battery, which is nice. They're packing 300 amp hours into a pretty small package there. But this one had sort of the same footprint as far as uh, depth and width. It's a little taller because they have, they've mounted their um, BMS up on the top part there. Um, it's a much more elaborate, better quality BMS. And of course this one is rated at 300 amp hours and the cells are actually matching what they've, they've put in there. Also this one you get a Bluetooth app, a really nice Bluetooth app and a lot of extra stuff like buttons on top, you have heated pads in here, have active balancing, Bluetooth, all kinds of extra things there. If you want to see more about that I can link to it. But anyway, I thought uh, I'd get that out of the way. I told them that I would still, you know, kind of review their battery, but I'd uh, let my audience know about what's gone on as far as uh, Will's, his name's Will Prouse, his uh, review went. So normally I will tear down these batteries, take them apart and show you the insides and stuff. But since uh, it's already been done in Will's video, I'll just link to his video. Um, I prefer actually to keep this one together because when it's together like this, it actually is, uh, has a water resistance to it, waterproof rating. Because at some point, I'm thinking this summer, I have a, a use case for this in my boat. I want to mount it up in the bow and use it to run the bow thruster and the anchor. Um, because it does have enough uh, output amperage on it to do those jobs quite well. And that will save a lot in my boat of extra cable running where it's coming all the way from my starter batteries to out to the front and my house batteries out to the front. So be able to kind of improve the, the boat systems there. But in between time, what I'm going to do is install this in my truck uh, toolbox um, power station that I use kind of as a, as a test bed for stuff. This battery's been in there almost a year now and it's worked great in there. So it's time to take it out and I'm going to put this in its place and then we'll, we'll be able to do some longer term tests with this battery. So let's get to it. I'll install it and show you where it's installed and we'll do a few quick tests of charge and discharge. So I don't have a terminal fuse handy with me. So I'm just going to reuse the, the fuse uh, that came with my inverter and I've attached it straight onto the, the positive terminal here. So with this casing, it's going to have lots of protection against any possible short out. Okay, I got her installed in my test bed. Um, I'm not going to go through and test capacity and, like I say, rip it apart and do a bunch of internal tests and stuff because that's already been done by the, the fellow Will, Will Prouse over at DIY Off-Grid Solar. So I will link you to his video. What I usually like to concentrate on with these reviews is kind of doing some real-world use of them. Like that SFK, I've been using it for a year. Most of the batteries I'll use for kind of like a year and then report back. And this has been a handy test bed. It's a toolbox that was easy to mount stuff on. You can see all kinds of different things are in there. Right now I'm testing a charger from, from Lee Time. Um, I have my Renogy DC to DC charger in there. I have another solar charger from a company called uh, SRNE. And then this uh, is a Motomaster inverter from a company up in Canada called uh, Canadian Tire. So all sorts of things I have in here to test. So it makes a good test bed because it kind of repeats what people might get in an RV, especially if they're enclosed, say, a fifth wheel in the front storage bay that's open to the elements, sort of, or travel trailers on the front tongue. 
that sort of thing. This box, nothing's really ever corroded or anything in this box because I have cut openings in the bottom and what I do is I have a solar panel on top that kind of keeps that battery topped up because I do have um, uh, six or seven dash cams, little cameras that I run 24-7 security so they draw about an amp and a half and the solar panel is able to replenish that. Anyway, that's the story with, with this arrangement. Um, I have it all kind of fused and stuff for protection. Like I say, I, I fused that there, but I wouldn't uh, go and copy it. It's more of a test bed, not a, a final kind of installation deal. Anyway, what I'm going to do is do a few tests just to make sure the battery is operating properly. I'm going to use the 80 amp charger here, and um, I'm going to run that and charge it up to full. And then I'll do a few tests using this 3000 watt inverter, make sure it's able to to pull a decent amount of current that nothing is wrong with the battery and then we'll probably come back at a later date and let you know how it how it uh, how it went one thing that they're doing with these batteries is they're going to relabel these as 280 amp hours and i guess they might uh, modify the, the high current shutdown set point in the in the bms the battery management system um, also, they tell me they're going to come up with a they're going to come up with a 300 amp hour battery at a later date. So let's do a few tests here. Okay, so I have my uh, charger going in there. Looks like it's put to about 75.6 amps, which would be a pretty hefty charge from solar panels or a RV uh, converter charger. So it should be a good test. I'm just going to let this go until the battery is fully charged. I don't know what uh, state of charge it was in. Usually they ship them around 50%. My uh, battery monitor here is showing 19%, but that's because it's it's from the last battery. Once it hits 100%, it resets itself. So we'll just let her go. Okay, so she ran about an hour and a half steady. Slowly the voltage rose up and the charger turned off. Everything seems to be fully charged, 100%. So we'll do some uh, discharge tests now. So let's try a pretty heavy uh, discharge here. I'm going to use this little space heater and turn it on to maximum, which would kind of simulate a microwave or a convection oven, something that's going to draw quite a bit of juice out of that battery. And I'll let her go for about a half hour as a test, so we'll just turn this on. There we go. Heat the outside, see what kind of amperage we're drawing. It's like 123 amps. Okay, she's been running about a half an hour. Let's see what we got here. Down to 60%. You can see, see still running 124 amps, 1.5 kilowatts. Looks like we're down to 12.1 volts. So, seems to be working okay. I'll continue using this battery in this test bed the rest of our uh, snowbird trip and then come May when we get back to the boat I'll, I'll have another video of the, the installation in the boat that I'm planning and I'll update you on how it's performed if there's been any problems with it and if you have any uh, feedback about this company or these batteries feel free to leave them in the comments for people Till next time, Ray from Love Your RV and Boat. Thanks a lot for watching. Cheers, guys.